Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. You ask questions and I answer them. Everything, super conscious, magnetic mind, transformation, creating a life you love and success. You've got questions and I've got answers. Hello, hello, hello. Look at all of you amazing people out there. Thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Thanks for being here. Good to, good to have you. Uh, good to have you all here. So who have we got? Who's all here? Hey, guys, there's a lot of you here live, actually. That's exciting. Yes, uh, who's first time us connecting in a, in a live format like this? There's a few people. Yeah, very, uh, very happy to be here, excited and uh, to be doing this show for, for all of you. So uh, just let's get straight into it. This, this show is for, uh, for everyone. Uh, so it doesn't really matter uh, if you're in one of the programs or, or not. Uh, you're, you're welcome to be here and listen to this. I will be making it uh, live. The, the show's premise is a Q&A show. Uh, we've had people send in questions from our masterclass group. Who's in the masterclass or certification or uh, who's in some of those programs? Uh, good, good to see all of you guys here. Uh, those of you who are not in the, the masterclass, uh, you get to get some great information today. Um, and it's, it's a place that you really should be. In the masterclass, we have a full university that teaches conscious creation, how to connect with your superconscious. Uh, and get coaching, hey, really to, to get coaching. We have a certification for those who want to become a coach. And then we have a mastery program for those who want to master and understand how to do this work. So uh, so lots, 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 lots available. Uh, today's premise is, uh, is for me to, to start to enjoy sharing what I think is some good answers to some great questions. Uh, take what you love, leave the rest. Uh, if you've got if you've got questions, I've got the best answer that I can come up with. So uh, I'm very, very thrilled and excited. So if it's our first time meeting, uh, welcome. My name is Chris Duncan, and I, I'm thrilled to be able to share some knowledge that has uh, been shared with me, um, that I've consolidated into, into a, a system and into a process that I think is the best way of consciously creating what it is that you love. And uh, and I love I love sharing it. You know, I, I am very blessed to say that uh I've applied these principles and created some results in my life that I didn't used to have. Uh, been able to build some successful businesses and a great relationship and a great home and uh, make a big impact. So, so hey, uh, I love it and I love sharing it. So the reason why we started this show was many people in our masterclass had questions and we didn't really have space uh, in all the coaching sessions to be able to share some of the answers. Uh, so I thought, you know, what? Uh, what better way to do it than to, to create a show? And then I thought, well, if I'm doing that, why not invite everybody? So if you're watching this on YouTube or you're on um, uh, is it Spotify or iTunes or any of the podcasts, uh, welcome. And, uh, and let's get into a super conscious session. So I'll, I'll read out the questions that have come in and we'll have a discussion. It's actually amazing. I'm going to have to put on more of these sessions because I have 57 questions that have been sent in so uh that's uh that's enough isn't it <laughs> that's enough so those of you who are here live will have some fun and i'll try to interact but i have definitely got enough questions to, to last me a few weeks uh so so first question uh we focus in manifestation but sometimes it can be a difficult situation a handicapped child, a divorce, bloody house, children with problems and tears. How do you, how do you deal with that and focus on the, the desired situation? Uh, it's a very it's a very true question. You know what uh, what is not true is that because you learn how to consciously create that you avoid uh, anything uh, uh, that is is not what you desire. You know that that's not true. You, you don't, uh, there, there's a lot of misguided ideas that are, oh, hey, uh, well, if I tune into my end result and I learn how to manifest, I'm only going to attract only things that I desire all the time. The, the problem with that premise is that we, we don't, we wouldn't actually like that. We wouldn't actually like that. I think if humans were, and just those of you alive, let me know if you agree, if humans were just given everything they want without needing to strive for something or overcome things, I think we would be um, intimately uh, uh, bored. I think we'd be bored. Uh, 
I think would be bored. I and, and the reason why I think that is when I look at what humans are obsessed about, we're obsessed with adventure. We're obsessed with overcoming situations. We're we're obsessed with uh, with creating. And we, we don't love stories of people just having it all. We don't love two sports teams where one team just completely dominates the other team. We like there to be, uh, they like there to be a challenge, something to overcome. So the first thing is we must understand that as creators, we stay in our end result of creation, regardless of our current circumstances. Does that make sense? Regardless, we're, we're in our end result. And we acknowledge that on our journey to creating what we love, uh, there, there's going to be times when we're moving towards what we love and it's, it's feeling really good. And then there's also going to be times where, where we're not. What happens is our, our focus can get taken off it. You know, just like this question, hey, our, our focus can get taken off and, and we, we go and, and we make it personal. So, you know, uh, yeah, I have a few multi-million dollar companies and, uh, and yesterday my, my dog spewed on my carpet <laughs> and, uh, and it made a big stain and I had to clean up that spew <laughs> and it didn't matter how many staff I have or, or money that I have or, you know, focus that I have my dog decided to spew on my carpet. And we've got this very organic do uh, dog food. And uh, so it has turmeric in it. And, uh, uh, and, and so it, it made a nice sort of uh, yellowy stain as well. And, uh, and, and that, that happened, eh? And, and so, you know, you, 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 in creation, you, you have to understand that, yes, there is going to be upset child there is going to be things other things that are happening and, and your job is to rise above it uh as the alchemists say we rise above we rise above and, and then we refocus it, it's when we give uh, extra attention to oh i'm such a you know a bad person because uh, you know i don't have this or you know i'm so terrible because of that or this thing and we, we make it personal we, we try to control everything so so it's arriving at every moment the same See, uh, you know, when you when you access the wizard's gate and step into the the uh, magnetic moments, when you when you're in the when you're in phase with creation, uh, you, you know, you're the same. You're the same. You know, you're you're just the same. There's there's stuff happening all around you, but you're having your own internal victory. And I think Viktor Frankl, with his search for meaning, you know, he really was able to to discuss that in his work, and you know, talk about how you can rise above any moment and you can find your own meaning. Because the one thing that uh, cannot be taken from you is your choice and your state of being. And and that's true alchemy is a true paradise is, is arriving at it first and being being here first. And that is something you, you can control. So, so I really, I really love the question, hey, and it says, you know, the question we, uh, but there will be difficult situations. So how, how do you focus? How, how do you, you focus? Well, the first thing is, is to, is to understand that that doesn't mean you're not being a, a you're being a bad manifester or something like that, you know, that, that's the first thing is not to create narrative around the current reality and, and also not try to work the whole thing out. Like, why is this thing happening? Why has he cheated and left me when, when I'm tuning into creating a relationship? See, we, we always try to working it out. And so the, the one question is where, where is my focus right now? Okay. So the answer would be, there's, there's one question, well, where am I focused? Am I, am I focused on my end result? Am I focused on what am I creating? Or am I, am I focused on how I'm unable to have it? Am I focused on how everything's going wrong? And, and that, that's a question. You go, okay, well, if it's that, well, then, then why is it that I'm making that more important than my end result? Why is it that the upset kid or this, why is that stealing my focus to, to creation? We, we, we live in a problem solving reality where everyone thinks that, you must become fluent in your problem in order to solve it. And uh, it's, it's just not true. You don't, do not have to become fluent in it. You do not have to understand the problem. You just need to understand what you're creating. And, and in the nature of creating, um, many times you don't have that which you didn't want. Yet, if you focus on what you don't want, you become entangled with it. 
uh, you, you know, you, you become it. So, hey, really good question to start us off. You guys agree? So, so, so you know, th there's always going to be speed bumps. Hey, there's always going to be speed bumps. There's always going to be things happening, and we want it. We want it. Uh, you know, as we're growing our business, uh, you know, I always have to remind everyone, hey, we chose this. You know, just recently, I decided to turn the advertising up on our, our business and really start start growing it. Uh, we were spending about $100,000 a month on advertising. Now we're spending about $400,000 a month on advertising. And, and with, with that has come a huge amount of people into our programs. And with having a huge amount of people coming into our programs and our businesses, well, then there's, there's a lot more work. There's a lot more things. And then there's, there's a lot more people that are super happy, a lot more people that need help. There's just a lot more. And at other times, you know, you'd go, oh, this is overwhelming, but, but we chose it, you know, it's like, this is, we chose this, we want to impact the world, we want to do more. And so, so remembering that you chose it, you know, you, you chose this, this is, this is your journey, your experience. So uh, great, great first question. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's get into the, into the next one. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a good one. It's a long question, so I'm going to take my time just to read this out. I'm, I'm going to just paste it in here for those of you who did want to read it out with me. Uh, Chris, I've been watching the video on creating a new reality, stepping into what you're creating and not what you want to solve. And I get it. I totally understand now that I have it all in the now and whatever I create is not going to change me. Great. My question is, does the old event identity eventually die? Or while in this matrix the world and due to the collective matrix and society's identity the old identity is still trying to sneak in or is it just a period of time till we self-master it thank you lots of love massive thank you been searching for this wisdom a long time it makes sense this knowledge needs yeah thank you well thank you i think it's from amor thank you so so the question in summary is uh, as i focus on what i'm creating and that i have it all now does the old identity that uh does it does it die well the old identity they're referring to is the identity that lives in polarity, that lives in polarity, the, the idea of the, you know, that um, <laughs> I, I have, uh, uh, in order to have this, it's, it's better than having that, you know, polarity, and, and that's the old identity where he doesn't, or they, they I'm actually not sure, I think they, they don't, they don't have that. So does, does that aspect of you die, the aspect that believes, well, I'm separate from my end result? And, and the answer is no, and, and we, we wouldn't want it to. So, so we, have three, we, have, uh, we have three separate memories. We have a self-conscious memory, an unconscious or subconscious memory, and then we have a superconscious uh, memory. And, and the, the superconscious memory is connected to source, right? Higher self source, and we work in that field a lot. Now, from this perspective, okay, you're, you have it all because you are all of it. Does this make sense, everyone? You, you are all of it. You, you, you know, you, you are it all. Yet, in order to experience anything, you must, you must become limited. You must become limited. It, it's like a, the, the orchestra it can't all play at the same time. If, uh, if the orchestra all played at once, you couldn't hear a single instrument. And uh, it might just sound like a big lot of noise. If you heard, ever heard an orchestra warming up, you say, all right, all of you just warm up at the same time. It's not what you're after. We, we, we simply cannot experience uh, anything if we, if we are the all. So th this work is about rising up into acknowledging that you're the all and then bringing down the aspects that you'd like to experience. You know, you, you, if, you, if you are... In some of the other work that you know there's even a there's even a book by a really great author he's a great author and the title is the ego is the enemy the, well the enemy of who you know uh it, it, without the self-conscious or ego or, or um limited perspective we couldn't have a human existence and without a human existence we wouldn't be able to experience any of this does that make sense you must be able to experience limitation i must be able to experience this is where i end at the end of my finger you know, and that's where you begin at the, you know, at the start of your finger that we, we must, uh, we must be able to experience limitation. The problem is, is if you only experience the world as limitation, where, where you know, uh, uh, poor is bad and rich is good, you know, 
and the, and in fact the self the self-conscious ego lives in limitation because in order for there to be life there has to be death does this make sense so so it's a really great thing to understand well i am it all and i get to experience it as limited limited isn't a negative limited is just saying this is the the container this is the the the, the aspect that i choose to experience i'm just choosing this experience or this experience, or this experience. I'm just choosing this one out of all the ones I could possibly be. So when we do this work, we connect to the all. We connect to the fact that we are at all, and we acknowledge that we are both anxious and confident and passive and aggressive and strong and weak and rich and poor and, 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 and all of these things. And we say, well, look, as I tune into this, I'd like to line up with that and bring that down and, and bring that into experience. And, and returning, returning yourself uh, back Back into experiencing one limited perspective. See, you, you don't actually want to experience it all, all the time. There's actually aspects you're choosing that you'd say, I really want to experience abundance, you know? And, and, and however, if you're, if you're choosing to experience abundance in opposition to scarcity, you, you're going to face the pendulum swing, you see? And, and, and so you, you, you must understand that, that even abundance is limited because it's not scarcity. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, isn't it? But it's true because it's limited. It's only abundance, you know? <laughs> it's a perplexing thought, isn't it? <laughs> if you get it, you get it. If you get it, you get it. <laughs> true. Even that's limited. <laughs> Isn't, isn't it true? Good question. So, so no, so no, it, it, you're not in opposition to it. It won't, it, it's, you're still available to it. You're just able to create a working relationship. You must create a working relationship with all three different levels of your consciousness. Does this make sense? So uh, many people live in a dysfunctional relationship between the three. And uh, they say, oh, I'd like to have this. And for some reason, they can't have it. It's like they're working against themselves. Well, what is that other aspect? Once you line up all the levels or all three, then, then you're able to have it with, with ease. With ease. Very cool. All right, next question. Uh, let's go. This is fun, eh? I just love this. Thank you all so much for being here. Who's here first time on a Chris Duncan Q&A show live or recorded? Uh, let me know. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's very cool. Okay, so next question. Uh, hi, Chris, I'm a new member, excited about the year ahead. Awesome, Nita, awesome. Uh, I already have what many people would feel is an amazing dream life and I'm grateful for it. Beautiful. I'm having a difficult time coming up with goals for living the life I love. Awesome. And living my true nature and purpose because I feel the life I have should be much more than enough. Well, it definitely is. Uh, I have a fun saying, not enough, because uh, there's no such thing, hey? There's no such thing. How do I pull out the buried parts of me that have not been expressed for so long? I know they're there, and that is why I'm in this. Yeah, perfect. So so, so first off, your, your life is enough. You know, uh, right now, whether whether the media wants to admit it or not, we live in the best time in human history ever, ever even with this uh, COVID corona situation, ever, ever. And it, it, it's so good. See, that's the thing, is it's, is it's just so good. I mean, you go back 100, 150 years, mortality rates, death, disease, uh, famine. I mean, the idea of being able to sit and watch sports, the amount of food we can, we can go and experience and eat and, you know, even just Wi-Fi free as you walk along, you know, your local, just, just amazing, just, just amazing. Hey, amazing. And, and, uh, and so it's all more than enough. Hey, you know, even the, even the hardest done by person, it's still, it's still more than enough. it's, it's really interesting to think about that. You know, you think about human history, like it, we, we are so lucky, so lucky, but, but, but do, what do we see everywhere? How bad it is? Hey, how bad it is, you know? How bad it is, uh, you know, your Wi-Fi. I, see, I seen someone on the plane the other day 
uh, well, it wasn't really the other day. It wasn't last time I was on the plane, which was a very long time ago. And he was he was uh, upset that his Wi-Fi wasn't working on the plane. You know, <laughs> you're like, okay. So, so the first thing is to acknowledge, uh, Nita, that uh, you're not alone. We, we all have a dream life right now. You know, we're in the, we are the 1% of, of, of humanity, especially if you're here on the internet listening to me right now. Gee, you know, we are, we're not just the 1%. If you, it, we're the 1% of the 1% of human population to be able to experience what we get to experience. It's just wild. I mean, but, but really think about this. Like, uh, think, think about this. Even just having a cold drink on a hot day, an ice cube in your drink. Unheard of, right? On a hot, go back 150. I don't know the exact number, hey, but it's just an experience. Think about it. If it was a hot day, how would you have got, see, a cold drink? And then to think about all the amazing fruits and different things you can put on it. Just that. <laughs> we, we, we miss it, eh? We, we miss it. We miss it. So 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 the first part is to, to really... Uh, I don't know about that, Scott. I don't know about that, Scott. You know, Scott's saying, yes, and we have a responsibility to help others have a better life. You know, I, I don't know about that. I believe that we have, uh, we have a responsibility to follow our own heart and our own truth. And if our own heart or our own truth leads us to choosing to do that, which I think it does for most people, I think that then they follow through and do that. But I don't think that we live in any sort of responsibility. Do you see the wording? There's no, so you see the wording there? We have a responsibility. We must, like an obligation. I don't, I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. I didn't, I don't uh, come with an obligation for anything else than to find my heart and bring it into the world. Does this make sense? Because we can live in obligation and responsibility. Does this make sense? But if it's in your heart, which is what I'm hearing, it's in my heart to help others. Well, then you follow your heart, hey? And that's the key. That's the key. We must not live in obligation or responsibility because then we're doing it for some other reason. There, yeah, yes. And so Scott says, "Well, it is in my heart. Great, but but uh, it might not. It might not necessarily mean it's in for everyone else's. See, uh, someone else, it's completely fine that they just experience abundant and and sit on the beach having cocktails. That's in their heart." You see that? Do you see by having, and we have a responsibility that we must, 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 is, is creating barriers on what someone else thinks is perfect for them. It, it's, uh, it's a big thing, it, it, and, it, and it involves some, some deep contemplation and thinking to go, well, what's, what's true for me to experience and do is not necessarily true for, for others. And I don't need to necessarily say that we have a responsibility or an obligation. The only responsibility that I believe that we have is to find our heart and bring it into the world. Find your truth and bring it into the world and, and live that. And I believe as we all live our truth, the, the right people will become painters and artists and musicians and, and, and workers to make the world better, hey, and leaders. You see that? See, imagine if all of us had to face that one responsibility of trying to make everyone else's life better. Do you see how that couldn't possibly exist? See, uh, there's, there's so many misguided notions out there. We all have a responsibility to be the leader. Well, then if we're all leading, who's the one being led? You know, we have to understand this. There's, a, there's such a desire to make everything equal. And it's a, not that this is anything to do with what, what was mentioned there, but we, it, we do have this desire that everything must be equal. We must try to even the playing field all the time. Yet inequalities are, are a, a part of, of existence. You know, there's a, it is unfair. I wanted to be a, an amazing basketball player and it was just unfair that I happened to, you know, not have a great jumping ability and not be tall enough. You know, it, it was an inequality, you know, and, and, uh, and but that's right. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very uh, intuitive teacher and that might be unfair for someone else, eh? Is, is that's my heart, is, is that. So I'm like, see what I'm saying, guys, is that the, the truth behind that and what a beautiful, and, and, I, and I love Scott, uh, what a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful uh, uh, addition there saying, well, we all have, no, we don't. We don't. We have a responsibility to find our truth and follow through on that. And that, that's the key. That's, that's a key, a very big key. Very, 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 very true. 
Very true. We all we all have a we all have a heart. We all have a higher self expression. And hey, look, the jury's out. Hey, so you know we all know American Constitution is a you know pursuit of happiness. Hey, but uh, but old Viktor Frankl, amazing man. If you guys get to read Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, amazing. He he says it's about finding meaning, pursuit of happiness, meaning. They they don't seem the same. Uh, you know, Carl Jung or or um, uh, Campbell would say it's a it's a hero's journey to go on an adventure to live our own myth, which uh, which is very very interesting to to discuss and and think about. And then there's obviously Maslow, which believes that the highest need is self actualization. And so I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, so you know. I guess we go on a search for meaning to overcome uh, a journey to self-actualize and pursue happiness. Hey, <laughs> I think that all right. <laughs> we we pursue pursue happiness uh, to 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 uh, self-actualize, find our meaning, and overcome challenges and create our own myth. Yep, yep, that seems right. <laughs> all of them but the, the key in all of them is that we all must remember we're all we're all different drops in the ocean and we all have our own our own uh, creation or aspect so so when it comes back to uh to Nita's question here is uh it is enough you know what's enough uh, you know it's enough to have a roof over your head and food in your belly and uh a warm place to sleep and lovely friends around you you know it is enough it's always been enough and it's more than enough okay uh, it's it's all enough. Someone's typed in, what about um, people who are miserable and heartless? What about them, hey? What, what's that got to do with this conversation? What about the fact that uh, in the uh, American, uh, uh, sorry, the African savanna, uh, the desert, um, uh, a hyena cub just got ripped apart by a lion? You know, what about that? What, what about the destruction of the forest? What about it? You see, there, you can always find, you can always find um, destruction or opposite of what you want, right? You can always find darkness. Darkness by definition is the opposite of your light. You can always find it. But I want the, uh, the person who typed that into me, notice your desire to, to focus on them, you know? As we're having this beautiful conversation about finding the, the heart, uh, we, we bring that in. And you, you might go, well, well what's, what's their purpose? Well, well their purpose is to live their purpose, you see. And what's destruction to the hyena is, is loving to the lioness who's feeding her cubs, hey? And we, and we don't like to talk about that in, you know, spiritual circles, hey? That that's, that that's their nature, you see. What's, who, who can feel that? It's like what's loving for the lioness to feed her family is absolute tragedy, to the hyena, isn't it? Isn't it? It's absolute tragedy. You see, if you were the if you were the leader of the hyenas, you would you would you know you'd mark the day as a terrible day of destruction, of darkness, of evil. But if you're the lioness, there might be a triumphant day. There might even be a celebration and a parade. Hey. Does this make sense, everyone? And, and so it's it's understanding and, and, and really going, okay, what's true for me? What am I creating? What am I going for? What's what's obvious? And, and this is a, you know, it's a very, it's a very big conversation. I was having a, a conversation yesterday with my mastery, uh, no, no, mastery and certification clients. And I said to everyone, I said, hey, you know, th this work isn't for everyone. My work's not for everyone. Hey. My work's not for everyone. My work's very deep. It's very, uh, it's very raw. It's very real. This work's not for everyone. You know, it, most people want to spiritually bypass many of the truths. So, so the question and the answer is that the, that all of us already have enough. Okay, and, and so I wanted to acknowledge that Nita, uh, Nita first. Then the next question: How do I pull out the buried parts of me that have not been expressed for so long? I know that I'm there. Beautiful. Well, good acknowledgement that it's there. But, you know, here's a really good question. If you had all the money in the world, how would you choose to spend your time? I just want everyone listening right now to acknowledge that question. If I had all the money in the world, how would I choose to spend my time? What would I love? But you're not allowed to save other people. You're not allowed to save. 
You're only allowed to live and experience and create. You're not allowed to go out there and say, I'm giving it away and I'm going to try to save and, 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 and make everyone else powerless. Okay, because in the aspect of saving, you're um, limiting the, per the other person's ability to, to be powerful and create. Yeah, I know a lot of people say, oh, darn it. That's what I was going to do. Okay, so you got all the money in the world. Okay, all the money in the world. You, you, you know, you, you, you've got as much as you want. What do you create? What do you choose to create? Some people are trying to, uh, that are on live, they've already tried to get around my question by saying, well, now I'm going to show them. They're still focusing on everyone else, hey? <laughs> well, see, what would you just love to do? It's, it's like, um, and I'm not making it wrong, I'm just acknowledging many people will, will not let themselves just be living their fullest expression. It's like they're not allowed. It's like, well, if I've got it, I must, you know, I must go over here. So, but, but maybe it is, you know, my fullest expression, what, what I love is I love to teach. Those are, who's in my groups and know that literally every single day I do sessions like this. I think yesterday we we're on for four hours. Uh, the day before that, I had two hours. The day before that, I had uh, two hours. The day before that, we had an hour, you know, like, like it's just, this is, this is what I do. Hey, I, I'll teach all day, every day. And um, it seems, it seems to be, uh, seems to be my truth, which is really weird. I didn't even finish high school. If any of my teachers ever hear that I enjoy teaching, they will, they will laugh. <laughs> They will laugh. I love it. Hey, I love it. And, and so but the key is I love it. And I'm not doing it to save people. I'm not doing it for any reason. I'm doing it because I love it. I love it. I get so much joy out of teaching. So much. And, and so here's, here, this is a question. You got all the money in the world. What would you love? So this is a good question. Uh, the, the, other thing, the other thing is, is what could you just do all day? You know, what could you just do all day for the joy of it, for the love of it? You know, what would you just do all day for the love of it? And, and when you start exploring these things, another thing is, is what are you fascinated by? What are you fascinated by? What could you do all day? What are you fascinated by? One of my mentors once said to me, you become what you're fascinated by. What do you fascinate? What fascinates you? What would you love to create? What could you spend your day doing continually? What, uh, what another mentor of mine said, Chris, what makes you cry? Like what makes you cry? Find what makes you cry that you're so just in, in love with. Find that. So, so those are some good places to start. We live in such a strange world that uh, we only are allowed little glimpses of what we love. And it gets, it gets, uh, it gets kind of drilled into us at an early age. Hey, go to school. Oh, now you get two week, two days off. And, and, and uh, unless you loved, loved school, I didn't love school. School to me was this horrendous jail that I had to go and sit in and, and not be myself. And, and, uh, and, but then you're allowed this time off to go and, and do what you love. And so it gets bred into us that life's about not doing what we love and then going for it. And, uh, and maybe this was, this was accurate or true over the, the centuries or generations. I just don't think it was. I think there's a lot more space for following love and, and joy and truth, especially, you know, in sort of Da Vinci's era and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good questions. Not saying any of these questions, uh, these answers are right, eh? These are just mine. <laughs> these are mine today all right so the next question well, we've already been going half an hour and i'm only i'm only three questions in <laughs> uh, next next question from mary how to really be it when i'm struggling with my current reality i'm doing an online business branding myself to inspire others to take action how to how to completely not get discouraged on the results because i'm still testing ads uh instead of focusing on the the journey you know uh, it's, a, it's a good question so that the question is you know I'm, I'm not seeing results. So how do I, how do I still do it? How do I still go for it? There's a, um, there's a couple things to this. First off, there, there's a misguided expectation that, uh, you know, you, you should see re results straight away. You know, it's like um, you've planted a seed and you're standing over the seed saying, grow tree, grow, you know? So, so first off it, uh, 
it does it does take you must plant the seed you must you know water the seed and and maybe a storm comes and uh you know um a flood floods what you're trying to grow hey so so stuff can happen but also um uh, also what's interesting is is humans like to think of something being growing as as as, as it's linear we like to think everything is linear so if we haven't done something in one week, we kind of, if something hasn't come back to us in one week, we take that week and we, we push it out a year and we say, well, I'm not going to be anywhere in a year. But, but nature doesn't work like that. Nature works with the, you know, the Fibonacci sequence and there's, a, there's a, a spiral of how nature unfolds. And it starts off really slow and, uh, and then it expands massively. So, so off the top of my head, the Fibonacci sequence, it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, uh, 55, 89, whatever's next, 146. And, uh, and, and it goes, so it starts off, uh, type in Fibonacci sequence and you'll see the spiral. I'm not, I'm not going to attempt to draw it on my board behind me, um, but um, but everyone gets it, hey, is that it starts off one, one. Okay, so the first two, it goes one, one. It's basically nothing grew in that time period. Then two, it, it grew a little bit. And then it goes three. You think, well, that hasn't grown at all. It's just keep growing by one. So there's no growth. Then it grew by one. Then it grew by one. Then all of a sudden it grows by two. You're like, wow, that's cool. But then all of a sudden it grows by three, then five, then eight, you know, and 13. And it just starts, it starts this huge upward um, spiral. So that, that's, that's, a, uh, that's how growth happens. And, you know, the Matthew effect uh, has something to do with this, which is, you know, based on the, uh, you know, those who have more get more, those who don't, don't. And, and, I, and I notice this in my life and you guys will too, if you start going to the gym and you, you want to lose weight, you, start, you, you go to lose weight, as you put on a bit more muscle, you, you know, you're stronger, so you're able to lift more, so you burn more, you burn more calories, so you lose more weight, and it increases your fitness, so you're able to go even further, and so because you're able to go even further, then you burn even more calories, so then you lose even more weight, so you're able to go even further. Does that make sense? And so it builds on itself. Everything's like this. If you have a little bit of, you know, if you have a little bit of success in business, you get a little bit of uh, money coming in, you employ your first staff, staff member, they're able to do more for you. So you then have more. So you're able to get out, you hire another staff member, and then you're able to get out. You see? So it's, it always starts off slow and then does this. You know, I'm so grateful right now. I have nearly six, over my two businesses, I have nearly 60 staff. And if you multiply that out by 40 hours a week and none of them work 40 hours, they all, they all go, they smash it, you know? We're talking about nearly 3,000 hours a week is, is being focused on my vision. And so what's interesting about that is someone else comes into the same industry as me and, and they're trying to, trying to you know, look, look, grow at the rate that I'm growing, but I'm there with 3,000 hours a week. And so they go, well, look at the progress you're making. But they don't realize that, you know, 12 years ago when I started, it was like this, and then it was like this, and then it was like this, you see? Same with, um, I think, like, uh, like, well, so everything. <laughs> everything works this way because you keep on adding to what's always there, and that feeds back into the system. It's a learning system. So, so look, you know, I'm not getting any results uh, and these sort of things. So the key is to understand that, your brain, your self-conscious is making it linear. And uh, th there's, there's always a lag time between when you plant the seed, then, then the earth responds and reciprocates back and grows the tree. You know, it, it is like that as well. If you're growing a forest, hey, how long it takes you to get the first tree up and then it drops a bunch of seeds, then that grows a certain amount of trees Then all of them drop the same amount. And then boom, you see, how long did it take you to get uh, one tree is not relevant on the rest of it. Does that make sense, everybody? Do you guys get what I'm saying here? So, so when you're creating, you must understand the natural rhythms of creation. It is so slow at the start compared to the end. And the longer you stay in that same focus, the, the bigger the gains are going to be only because you stayed in it. But yet most people give up after year one or year two or whatever it is, and they never get to realize the big gains. Uh, when when everything's just been building and turns into this momentum, hey?
very important. And that's not me saying it. Just go look at nature and just look around you. It's actually why uh, as much as our society would like there to be um, equality in income, that's actually why it will never actually happen. Because as soon as someone makes money, then they have, they have the ability to buy more houses, which makes more money, and then they can have, invest in more businesses, and they can, then that creates more, and then you know their kids have a better quality of life, so then they can send them to a better school, and they're better at school, and then they can have better nutrition, and so those kids grow up, and, da, 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 and it creates this inequalities. It just, it's just, it's, 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 and yet our, uh, our society doesn't want to acknowledge a truth, you know? Uh, but it's not just in humanity, you know, you look at uh, species and you, you look at uh, across the, the ages. I mean, people think that income inequality is something new. Well, have you heard of a guy named Genghis Khan? You know, uh, you look at all the, the pharaohs of Egypt, you know, they had all this gold everyone else didn't. So, so, so I'm not saying that it's a thing that I, that's good. I'm just acknowledging truth, hey? I'm acknowledging truth. And so here's the truth. The Matthew effect is real. Those who have more get more. Those who have less, even that, that disappears. And so what, what, do you, what must you do? You must acknowledge that you, you, know, you, you plant, you grow, you, you, you move forward, you keep going, hey? You keep going. You keep going. And know that there's no such thing as linear growth or linear death as well. It's, it's big. And, and that's just, hey, it's just nature. You can look to nature uh, a lot about how, how things are. How things are. Good question. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Uh, someone says, do, uh, this is from Vaveen. Do you have any process, particular process um, or meditation that I go into um, before doing uh, a session? Yeah, I do something called anchoring. It's uh, I first learned it under the premise of, of NLP. Uh, I think Pavlov in his conditioned response was the first person uh, to, to really do it with his with Pavlov's dogs, which is uh, not an experiment that would be allowed today. Uh, but but yes, I use I have an anchor. I have anchors set, and uh, most uh, most weeks I spend time meditation, recreating that uh, anchor as a shortcut to the field. Easy one, easy one, easy one. How are we all going out there? Is this an enjoyable session? Are you guys happy to be here, even if you didn't get to ask any questions because you're uh, you're not uh, in the group or whatever? Is it still still valuable? I guess you haven't you haven't hung up yet, have you? So that might have been a good sign. <laughs> That's an oh, there they all go. No. <laughs> oh, I'm allowed to. <laughs> That's all. That should be my obvious sign. Are people still here? <laughs> That is them tipping their hat saying, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> All right. Um, Nikki, hey, Chris, I love the process and know it works, but I still struggle to explain how to friends and family, not the tension and structure part, but the super conscious field. If you have any way for it not to sound so wacky, I would appreciate it as I feel my mind um, not getting my head around that. I, um, I would get far more people involved if I could deliver that part of the message. Uh, good, good, good. So, so that sounds like Nikki must be in um, our certification. So obviously we have some really great training and really great science for you to explain what the field is. Uh, I like to draw on, uh, if you go to the CIA website, uh, type remote healing. If you go to Google, type remote healing CIA. And uh, who's heard of remote healing? Hey, okay. uh, sorry, not remote healing. I meant to say remote viewing. Remote viewing. Remote viewing. Uh, you, you'll go find a ton of research and explaining that there is a field in non-local events, remote remote viewing. And that's a really, a really good place to stand on and, and sit, sit with. Um, the, the United States government spent many, many, many years uh, you know, studying how to remote view different areas with lots of successful um, results. And then they released it all. Uh, it's a really, there's some really great reads there. And there's some really great books on that. Another great book is The Field by Lynn McTaggart. The Field by Lynn McTaggart. Would someone um, type that in? She, she's just awesome. Hey, she's just an amazing woman. 
the field is uh, is very, very, very good at explaining what the field is. Um, there's a guy named William Tiller, uh, the science and structure of magic. He's based out of Stanford. Uh, he's got a lot of amazing, an amazing uh, ability to explain this. For, for me, uh, I prefer to explain the field as, as it is explained in the cert, which you already have, uh, and what, what the field is and what we are, uh, and, and for people to get it. Yet, here's how I want to, to be with the question for you. Um, the friends and family part, I still struggle to explain how to friends and family. You know, I don't go around telling everyone about this work. Uh, I, I think I was explaining this yesterday. When I'm, when I'm at my tennis club, I'm Chris playing tennis, you know? And um, I've never had a conversation about the superconscious with either of my parents. Yet, I think it's now 10 million people have seen my videos and, and experienced it with me. So, so what am I saying? Is there, is there is enough people out there that are already searching for this, that already want to know about it, that you can be in this work with, you see? Does this make sense? There, there's, there's already... There's already enough people out there. And uh, then your focus then becomes about serving the people that are already searching, already looking, that are already in this work, in this field. There's millions. So there's a desire behind that question that I want my family to accept the work that I'm doing. Does that make sense? Hey, Chris, how do I best? There's a, there's a desire behind it that they must accept what I'm doing. That they must they must approve and uh and and that's and that's fine yet you must acknowledge that that's your desire they must approve and so my challenge to you is is are you allowed to do something that just you believe in that they might not necessarily understand or approve of are you allowed to do that are you allowed in your body and your being are you are you do you allow yourself to do that because I would suggest that's actually what's behind that question. See, that's what's actually behind that question. See, that what you've said there, I feel my mind not getting my head around the fact that I can't explain it to friends and family is stopping me getting more people involved. And my suggestion is that this is a complete story based on a wounded aspect of you that says, I must belong to my family and they can't, they, they can't, they must like what I do. Does that make sense? That's what I sense is there. And so if I was to try to answer your question, I'm answering it to an aspect of you that isn't actually just focused on getting out there and, and changing the world and enrolling people and making, making the difference on the planet. That aspect of you actually wants to be accepted by family and is so scared of it. Does that make sense? So scared of that. We must always ask, what aspect of, where am I focused? See, what's the focus behind that? And, and to me, the focus behind that is, I must convince them. I must convince them. They must accept what I'm doing. I see. And I guarantee that that structure will show up in other places. They must accept this person I'm going to be in relationship with. You see, they must accept this. They must accept this. They must accept this. I would, I would, I would throw it out there that this is likely to be a huge transformational uh, moment when you choose to do something in spite of friends and family not getting it and just doing it for you. Just doing it for you. Or I could be completely wrong. Could have got the question completely wrong. I think that's it. All right, how are we doing? Everyone's still here, so we'll take that as a good.
Yes, this, this is being recorded. It's going to be uh, hi everyone out there on YouTube, by the way, and, and Spotify and iTunes. We have this as a as a podcast. We have this on uh, YouTube, and so this is this is uh, for everyone. Yeah. All right. Next question. This might be our last question for today. I'm just looking at the time. This might be. Uh, yeah. Someone said said to me, Chris, nothing is strong as a need for significance within your own circle of family and friends. I think that that's an absolute story. I think there's nothing as strong as the person's will to create what they love. And if they choose to create that story, that that's so strong, I must be significant. They're actually coming from a small aspect of themselves. I don't buy into that at all. I don't buy into that at all. I believe that many people make it very strong to try to be significant in their friends, family, and circle. I believe that they they make it significant, but I don't believe that nothing is as strong as that. We can we can use see there's and, and I'm okay if you disagree with me. That's fine. We'll we'll still have coffee and share a kombucha and a and a juice and hang out. I have no problem with other people disagree. No problem with that. For for me, there's uh, there's there's uh, whatever you want to be strong is strong. And so if that is the narrative or story you'd like to be strong, well, then that's exactly what you, you know, you'll find and create. And many teachers might tell you that there's nothing as strong as this or that, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, but what's, what's there's for me, there's nothing as strong as my will to create what I love. There's nothing as strong as the power of love. There's nothing as strong as, uh, <laughs> there's nothing as, as strong as, Is sovereign choice. There's nothing as strong as there's nothing as strong as unconditional love. That's what I get. All right, next next question. Ian. Uh, Chris, when I spend time in the field and return generally changed, I feel little of any resistance. Uh, to my goals being achieved, as I know they already exist. Okay, my conscious mind or ego asks me, are you certain, which I don't respond to as I am. My question is, is there a method of silencing the ego? Ah, oh, uh, through subconscious recode. Mm. So this is a really good question. So, so as you read this, hi, Chris, when I spend time in the field, and return generally changed. I feel little of any resistance to my goals being achieved. As I know they already exist, my conscious mind or ego asks me, are you certain, which I don't respond to. My question is, is there a method of silencing the ego through the recode or is it silenced over time? Here's my question to everyone. When you read that, and it's a very well-written question, where is the power? In that question, where is the power being given? Where is this person's power? Yes, it, many have written in what I agree as well, is the power is given to this thing that must be silenced. You see that? See, this, this thing, I must be silenced. I can't, I must silence this. And it's, it comes from a, one of the core six, which is the need to be perfect. Okay, so we already talked about one of the six already, uh, which, was, uh, which was the need to belong. The, 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 the core belief is I must be perfect. Okay, so, so Chris, I'm, I'm going to create and I'm doing it the right way, but there's this one thing that's not perfect yet. And so anything we do in a structure where that is given the power will resolve itself in the ego being given more power. See, if, if we say, well, you must be quiet in order for me to create, the ego goes, well, I've got the power. You see, and you focus to try to quiet this thing. You become so you become so obsessed with uh, with quieting it and pushing it and saying, "Oh, you must be quiet. You must be quiet." And then nothing. Well, I don't want it. And then, then you're over here, aren't you? It's like people that can't feel a negative thought. Oh, can't feel that. Oh, we better not feel that. I oh, better go. Better go clear that one negative thought instead of creating. However, if you look at creators. They're not, they're not without um, disbelief or, or, or doubt, are they? You look at big creators in the world. Who are some big creators? Hey? 
Uh, a guy that, you know, what's relevant right now, Tom Brady, you know, uh, in the Super Bowl. What a creator he is. He knows how to create. Uh, you know, how about Lady Gaga? She's a creator. How about uh, J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter? Creator. Total creator. Someone who's been able to create magic uh, in this world and do so. Uh, wow, that's cool. I would say that all of them would acknowledge that they have self-doubt, negativity, uncertainty. They have all these things you see going on. Yet, did it stop them creating? Well, clearly not. Clearly not. Hey? And, and, and so, so here's the answer is you must just create and focus. And as you create and focus on what you want, those that the, 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 the little negative negativity or the little, I'm not sure about this, because it's given no energy becomes irrelevant. All aspects of you, all aspects of you are listening all the time. All aspects of you are listening all the time. So when you go and give that the power, you're telling your superconscious self-conscious and unconscious that the self-conscious has the power and that negative thought has the power it is more powerful than me because that's where the attention is going so if we're giving it attention what does it do it's alive so it gets louder now, obviously that's important obviously that's important and, and so we must catch ourselves and go what am i focused on right now i'm focused on the need to have perfect thoughts oh I'm focused on trying to be perfect. What aspect of me is trying to be perfect? Oh, it's that part of me that, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I had to have everything be perfect. Oh, that's so funny. Let's have a laugh at that part of me. Okay, so what am I creating? Oh, that's right. Back to creating my happy marriage. Oh, cool. Let's focus. Oh, back to creating that. So, so you allow it to be there. You don't resist. It. Oh, that's funny that I'm doing that. Back to focus on creating a world-changing brand. Back to focusing on creating artwork. Back to uh, creating a, you know, a habitat for humanity. Back, see what I'm saying? Back to that. Back to it. Back to it. Because like a pendulum, whatever you try to push away, pushes back. What you push away, pushes back. So, hey, we had some good questions today. Did you guys enjoy it? Uh, we've been here for uh, a good hour answering some questions and being here. Look, uh, I'm so thrilled to let you know that we have about another 45 questions that were sent in, yet I uh, <laughs> I allowed myself an hour uh, to be here with you guys. And so I hope that if you're on YouTube or, or Spotify or anywhere else, you're enjoying it. Now, if you're not in uh, the masterclass, is there anyone that's not in masterclass or you know, uh, is interested in our work and would just like to get some more information? Would you, is there anyone go, you know, I wanna, I wanna get, get more, get more info. I don't have an offer or anything like that. Um, oh, there's, there's a link I've just put in. And if you'd like to talk to someone on my team about our masterclass, our coaching, our certification, our mastery program, or any of that, um, there's a link and you, you can book in a call. Does that sound fair enough? So, so there's a link there. And uh, whenever you want to have a chat, there's, there's there. If you want to be ask, asking questions on these shows, you need to be in one of the programs. And the reason is, is I don't want to have to ask uh, all the questions on the basics. Uh, I want to answer the questions on how to apply this work. Uh, so, hey, I really love you guys. And uh, you guys absolutely rock. So thanks for being here. And uh, I'll send you an email when the next one is. Clearly, it's going to have to be soon uh, because we have so many questions. Have an amazing day. Stay magnetic. Stay focused. You're super conscious. You can do this. And uh, I love you all so much. Bye. You've got questions and I've got answers.